All right. So yeah, let's just jump right in. So yeah, just who you are and your role at World Relief. Yeah. So uh, my name is John Musser. I serve as the Mission Services Director at World Relief here in the Triad area of North Carolina. My role is essentially church and community engagement and finding avenues and ways that we can facilitate partnerships with um, primarily local churches, but others throughout the community to join with us in our efforts of serving immigrants, refugees, and survivors of human trafficking. World Relief is a international Christian humanitarian organization that has been around since after World War II. That's really great. I, I didn't know some of that history of, of World Relief, so that, that helps put things in context. What was it that kind of drew you into the, the work of World Relief in, in the first place and, and wanting to be a part of it, just kind of from a personal point of view? Yeah, World Relief's mission and philosophy are um, extremely important to me, the centrality and primacy of the local church and seeing the local church live out and, or live into really God's mission of caring for those on the margin of those who have been forgotten or those in vulnerable situations, trying to tie ourselves and unite our efforts with the local church to extend the love and welcome of Christ to those who are on the outskirts. The emphasis at World Relief is really holistic support and care. And so we recognize that all human beings have a complexity of needs, um, mind, body, soul, et cetera. And as a result, we're trying to focus our efforts in care and support around a variety of different support or stability factors is what we call them. We have uh, employment services that are focused on um, helping people navigate, getting jobs, applying for jobs, interviewing for jobs. Uh, we have immigration legal services, which provides legal assistance for incoming refugees and other vulnerable immigrants um, to help them in that process of obtaining citizenship. So all refugees arrive here legally, but it takes a five year period for them to gain citizenship. And so we help them along the way through those legal hoops. We have our anti-human trafficking um, program, which is focusing both on preventative efforts in preventing situations of trafficking from occurring, primarily through education and um, helping people understand uh, or addressing the vulnerabilities that lead to trafficking, as well as providing rehabilitative care for those coming out of trafficking situations, working with local law enforcement and other groups um, to really uh, diagnose where trafficking may be occurring and provide relief and safety for those individuals. We also are a refugee resettlement agency, one of nine that works with the U.S. State Department in resettling incoming refugees. And um, the, the main portion of our system for refugees is this 90-day intensive period after they arrive, but then employment and then also our health and wellness services extend beyond that and legal services to help them navigate life in their new community um, for up to five years. We're able to provide that assistance health and wellness were obviously focused on their their physical well-being as well as their mental health and um, helping them with things like therapy obviously all of them coming out of traumatic situations and so helping them process that and, and seek healing is a really important part of our work but that's that's kind of the the holistic way in which we're seeking to support the community so we're seeking to provide stability with all sorts of things related to life and the resources that are necessary to, to thrive in a new community. But also on the other end, we're really trying to facilitate relationships and, and human connection as a key integral part of not only creating transformation for the situation of the client or those that we're serving, but also the transformation of the church in the process of serving, caring, reaching out. I, I love that. I love the the transformation on on both sides kind of thing. And yeah, the the relationship first, human connection and the holistic approach. I think those fall really closely in line with who we're hoping to be at the heart as well and, and what we want our partnerships and our service to look like. And, and it's great to be learning from you guys in that in, in so many different ways. So yeah, it's it's a great approach. So similarly then, what what's something just as you think about maybe these last six months or maybe in particular the the Afghanistan response that I know is, is such a huge part of what you guys are involved in right now. But yeah, thinking about these last few months, what's something that you're you're really proud of in terms of the, the work of World Relief Triad? Sure. Um, 
I guess I want to first say that we are extremely grateful for the heart support. It's a daunting task to to come into a new community, not knowing the language, not knowing the culture, not knowing any of your neighbors, and not having any of those support systems. So, what what I'm kind of excited is to see World Relief and the surrounding community step up and play that. Role of being that support, being new neighbors, being uh, that presence, that welcoming presence for for these families. These individuals have come here of no choice of their own, and it's kind of a last resort option for them. It is amazing for the church to be a part of this vital work. If there was one thing, or or maybe two things that were really important for all the all volunteers, all of those people who will work directly with refugee families or immigrant families of different kinds, what what are one or two things that are really important for them to keep in mind or really important for them to, to show up with as, as they serve? Our approach must always be people focused and not needs focused or needs based. When we view an opportunity of connecting with someone from a needs perspective, our concerns are primarily around tasks. What can we do to get them to the place that we want? And usually there's an imposing of our own agenda on them in the process. There's a, an assumption that we know what their needs are and how to meet those needs. Primarily, we want people entering into connection and relationships with our clients in such a way that they are really focused on establishing that connection and bridging those cultural barriers through the avenue of cultural difference. It's actually a key opportunity to connect and go deeper and ask those questions. So instead of seeing those cultural linguistic barriers as I can't get to know them, actually they can be incredibly um, helpful um, conversation starters and ways to to naturally express curiosity and, and get to know one another. It's less sort of turning a person into a project and, and more relationship first, though though there's the acknowledgement of needs and, and trying to meet some of those needs as, as that relationship develops, but it starts with, with the relationship. I, I love yeah, that. it's really important for, for volunteers to come in with this mindset that it is a reciprocal exchange, that you're not coming in just to give, um, just to be the savior and just to be the, the need provider, etc. You're actually there to receive from them their stories, their culture, um, and so it should be a two-way street, just like any friendship. There's reciprocity and a, a give and take. And so we encourage that sort of mindset as well. So good. And and the humility that that requires, the humility to acknowledge that, that it is two-way for sure. Yep. So John, as we are looking to the end of 2021 here and, and turning the corner into 2022, which feels crazy. COVID time has warped everything, but we are in fact coming up on 2022. What is something that you're really looking forward to? We are entering a time where we're seeing our office staff expand. So we're, we're moving from roughly 24 staff right now to probably closer to 30. We're moving from a time of having resettled nearly 40 individuals last year to 400 this coming year and then even 600 the year after that. So we are really, really gearing up. We get to play a role in reconnecting families that have been separated with some of these ongoing um, crises and the awareness building among Christians and the church and the community that this is a real concern and there are active ways that we can respond and these global issues are actually impacting our local neighborhoods and our areas. Just seeing the, the church and community poised and ready to be more active and responsive to some of the newcomers to our area is, is really encouraging. And I hope that that has durative and, and long-term staying power of transforming the way people live their lives, the way they make relationships with their neighbors, the way that they're attuned to realities going on in the world that um, do have an impact here and how we can play our role in responding. Our mission statement at the heart is reconciling people to God and each other through Christ's love, simple. And that's a mm. whole other layer of reconciliation. I, I love that. John, we, we uh, are, are more than a little excited to jump in on all the work of, of World Relief and just to partner with you guys in, in this important work, this really kingdom-centered work. We have more and more people at the heart who are excited to join in and be a part of volunteering. So I think God is, is doing some big things in this partnership, but so grateful for you and your ongoing work and, and your work in connecting the heart as well to, to all that's going on. So yeah, lots of things ahead for sure.